Health Promotion in the Older Adult, Part 2. There's a lot of myths out there about older adults. These myths include, but are not all inclusive, that old age begins at 65 years. Most older adults are in long-term care facilities. Older adults are sick and mental deterioration occurs. Older adults are not interested in sex. Older adults do not care how they look and they're lonely. Bladder problems are a problem of the aging. Older adults do not deserve aggressive treatment for illnesses. And older adults cannot learn new things. With psychosocial development, we're looking at Erickson's theory regarding development in the adults. With the young adults, the task is intimacy versus isolation. They need to complete tasks such as achieving independence from parents, establishing intimate relationships, and choosing an occupation or career. If tasks are not accomplished, the young adult may become isolated and self-absorbed. With middle adults, their task is generativity versus stagnation. The tasks are to establish and guide the next generation, accept middle age changes, adjust to the needs of aging parents or other important people, and reevaluate goals and accomplishments. If tasks are not accomplished, middle adult tends to focus on themselves, becoming overly concerned with their own physical and emotional health needs. And the older adults, their tasks are ego integrity versus despair and disgust. Ego integrity is facilitated when the older adult has successfully accomplished tasks that were identified earlier in life. A person that regrets the past and sees current problems as insurmountable may despair. The tasks of midlife will continue or may resurface. Older adults still strive to guide the coming generations and to leave something behind, which is the generativity versus stagnation, and their need for love and closeness will continue, which is the intimacy and isolation, as does a strong sense of who they are in relation to family and community, which is identity versus role confusion. Now, due to the older adults' physical and social changes that are associate, associated with aging, the older adult repeatedly faces the need to adapt and to repeat already completed tasks. Time for realization of a wholeness perspective with an inner search for meaning and order in the life cycle comes about with the older adult, and they search for emotional inter, int, integration and acceptance of the past and present, as well as acceptance of physiological decline without the fear of death. Different adjustments that older adults face are decreasing health and physical strength, retirement and reduced or fixed income, death of a spouse, children, siblings, and or friends, acceptance of self as an aging person, maintaining satisfactory living arrangements, redefining relationships with adult children and siblings, and finding ways to maintain their quality of life. As we assess the older adults, there's several things that we need to think about. First of all, there is a significant variation among the older adult. This can be physiological, cognitive, and psychosocial. 
In other words, we can have someone who physiologically is, let's say, 65 years of age, but cognitively they may be 80 years of age or psychosocial even older. And the opposite is true. We can have someone who's 90 years old who physiologically is still 70 and so on and so forth. Society labels include the youngest old, which includes the ages of older adults from 65 to 74 years. We have the middle old, which include ages of older adults from 75 to 84 years. And then we have the oldest old, which are ages 85 years and older. There's also variations in life expectancy, and these variations can be based on three basic factors. That includes the socioeconomic and race ethnicity factors, which will include income, poverty level. Did the person graduate from high school or college? The unemployment rate, and then race and ethnicity. The second would be behavioral and metabolic risk factors. This would include maybe hypertension, diabetes, obesity, smoking, and the client's physical activity. And finally, we have healthcare factors. What is the availability of healthcare providers, the quality of services, and the client's insurance? Key points to remember in the assessment of the older adult is there is an interrelation between the physical and psychosocial aspects of aging. There's also effects of disease and disability on the functional status. And it's important to tailor the assessment to the older person. We may need to take more time and allow for rest periods for the older adult. We should also review both prescriptions and over-the-counter medications with the client at every appointment. Determine if the client has sensory impairments such as vision or hearing. And also determine if there's any memory deficits. Additional considerations would be that older adults that become suddenly confused we need to consider that they may have an infection, especially a UTI. And then some older adults with infectious processes such as pneumonia will often experience tachycardia, tachypnea, and confusion, and maybe a de decreased appetite and functioning without the more common symptoms of a fever and productive cough. In other words, the symptoms of an older adult may be different than a younger adult that has the same disease. With the older adult health, <clears throat> we need to realize that most older people are not impaired. However, they are more vulnerable to physical, emotional, or socioeconomic problems. There is an increased risk of them potentially becoming ill. We need to be aware that chronic health problems or disabilities may develop as we age. Some of these older adults may deal with polypharmacy where the client is taking multiple medications, um, which can be a significant issue in the health of the older adult. We also need to be aware of diversity and chronic illness, that structural racism. We need to be aware of accidental injuries, dementia, delirium, and depression, along with elder abuse. The cognitive development in the older adult, we understand that intelligence will continue to increase into the client's 60s, and cognition does not change appreciably 
with aging. However, with the older adult, response and reaction times may begin to increase. They may demonstrate some mild short-term, which is the recent memory loss uh, that can be common as we age. However, the long-term memory will usually remain intact. We also need to consider that dementia, Alzheimer's disease, depression, and delirium can occur, not a given here, but it can occur and cause cognitive impairment. And self-concept is relatively stable throughout the adult's life. Now, older adults are going to be at an increased risk for accidents, and some of the potential causes of those accidents would include changes in the vision and hearing, a loss of mass and strength of muscles, slower reflexes and reaction time, decreased sensory ability, combined effects of chronic illness and medications, and maybe economic factors. Sleep disturbances in the older adult. The sleep patterns of an older adult require an average of seven to eight hours of sleep. A decline in physical health, psychological factors, effects of drug therapy such as nocturia, or environmental factors may be implicated as the cause of an inability to sleep in the older adult. So other factors that may affect sleep include drugs and substances, their lifestyle, their usual sleep pattern interruption, emotional stress, environmental issues, exercise and fatigue, and food and caloric state. The sleep disturbances that we often see in the older adult include insomnia, sleep apnea, and narcolepsy. This all relates to the older adult spending more time in bed before falling asleep. Their total sleep time and sleep efficiency is reduced. Understanding that there is a greater than 30 minutes of awake time in over 50% of older adults after sleep onset. Daytime napping increases. Changes in the circadian rhythm occurs. In other words, they often will go to bed earlier and get up earlier. Their sleep is lighter with more time in the stage one and less time in stage four, which is the stage where restorative sleep occurs. The REM sleep is going to be shorter, less intense, and more evenly distributed. The frequency of abnormal breathing, incre abnormal breathing events increases. The frequency of leg movements during sleep increases. So how do we help the older adult deal with sleep disturbances? Well, we can look at non-pharmacological. There is behavioral therapy where we associate the bedroom with sleep and sexual activity only. Relaxation therapy with relaxation exercises, meditation, imagery exercises, massage, etc. Temporal control therapy, where we maintain set times for sleep and avoid those daytime naps. Sleep restriction therapy, where the time in bed is for sleep only. Exercise should be avoided within four hours of bedtime, but regular exercise can enhance sleep, sleep ability. Light therapy. We need to provide exposure to natural light and avoid night lights. The client should limit caffeine. 
perhaps providing a light snack or a warm beverage prior to bed. Maintaining a quiet environment prior to bed with soft lights, quiet music, and limited noise. Decreasing interruptions. Medicating as necessary. For example, if there's pain, medicate for it. Providing comfortable temperatures. And remember that we sleep, up, sleep better in a cooler temperature. Maintaining a regular bedtime. Developing a wind-down routine, such as brushing the teeth, reading, snacking, etc. Avoiding a computer or television, in other words, avoiding screen time just prior to bed. Or go to another room if unable to fall asleep. So let's look at some health promotion of the older adult. Aging is not synonymous with disability and loss of function. Older adults define their health in relation to how well they function. And functional health includes the ability to remain self-reliant, to compensate, and to maintain a sense of independence and control over self and environment. There's a trend to fostering increasing independence and self-care in older adults. Health co concerns of the older adult include chronic health, which is the probability of a person becoming ill increasing with age. Leading causes of death in the older adult would be the chronic diseases of heart disease, cancer, chronic respiratory diseases, stroke, Alzheimer's dementia, and diabetes. Health concern of polypharmacy, as I mentioned earlier. This is going to be the use of many medications at the same time that can pose hazards to the older adult. Older adults should receive education and counseling on potential medication issues to help minimize the risk for adverse effects, toxicities, and drug-to-drug -drug interactions. Additional health concerns of the older adult include accidental injuries, once again, dementia, delirium, and depression, and elder abuse. Actions to promote health in the older adult. We look at the physiological function, we need to help maintain the physiological reserves and continually assess for early detection of problems and provide nursing care to help maintain the physical status. With cognitive function, we may need to slow the pace of activity and wait for responses. Don't be in such a hurry. And be sure that eyeglasses or hearing aids are used if they are required and that they work appropriately. Psychosocial needs. We should assess and support sources of strength and encourage the use of those support sources and encourage self-care. With nutrition, we should assess for tooth loss and denture fit, assess the client's height, weight, eating patterns, and food choices, assess for malnutrition, and the ability to swallow and consider supplements. With sleep and rest, discourage excessive napping and assess those bedtime patterns, their medications, anxiety, and depression. With elimination, we need to assess for normal bladder and bowel function. Consider safety bar installation in the bathroom and Assess their diet for fluid and fiber content. With activity and exercise, we should be assessing physical function abilities and slow the pace of care, allowing extra time as needed for the client to complete activities. With sexuality, we should assist with personal cares and hygiene as needed. Encourage safe sexual practices. 
encourage water-soluble lubricants with females, and evaluate for erectile dysfunction with a male. With the meeting developmental tasks, we should always promote continued development and maintenance of functional health by identifying those unmet tasks, feelings of isolation, and physical or sensory limitations.